The physiological effects actually in the car are probably too many to mention. Um, we get to what's called uh, the somatographic illusion. It's something that pilots understand well. It's, uh, it's the pitch up, pitch down disorientation that the inner ear is detecting the changes of gravity. It's very disorientating. You never get used to it. You just have to fight really hard against it. There is then the effect of the G. Driving feet first, all the blood tries to run towards my head, and then as, we, uh, as I close the throttles and the car slows down at 3G, all the blood now tries to rush from my head to my feet. During the acceleration phase, my body has what's called the baroceptor reflex. It actually drops my blood pressure to try and take away the excess pressure in my head because all the blood's running that way. As Soon as we reverse the G, you get what's called the push-pull effect. You've now got this very low G tolerance. Now all the blood tries to race to your feet. And unless you fight it, tense up the right muscles and, uh, and compensate for it, there is a risk of blacking out. Again, pilots are very used to it. It's unusual to have to do it in a car. This car, I will have to use those kind of skills. And that is why not only having the best day job in the world as a fighter pilot prepares me for the technology and the speed, it also prepares me for the extremes of physical endeavour that will be part of driving Bloodhound. I'm thrilled that we've managed to get so much support from the Ministry of Defence. We've not only got the, uh, the old uh, prototype EJ200 uh, Typhoon jet engines on loan, our land speed record recycling uh, attempt to use military technology. It is the best technology in the world. We're also working with the RIMI, who are doing a lot of help on uh, structures and support equipment. But one of the real challenges we've got is this car is going to do a thousand miles an hour. That's faster than any jet fighter in history at ground level. We're going to go faster than Typhoon will go. The tail fin on this car is going to be the hardest working aerodynamic device in the history of aviation. The tail fin is going to have to be very strong, very precisely made, and that requires a very special set of skills. And I'm delighted that the Royal Air Force is contributing those skills through 71 Squadron. A small team of engineers are going to spend the two or three months building the world's hardest working tail fin, something that I know will keep the car straight and I can have absolute confidence. I've seen the quality of their work. It is second to none. I'm delighted they're joining us.